Chrysler. Tonight's tale of tomorrow, Test Flight. Starring Lee J. Cobb. Hello there. Say, I wonder, would you mind very much looking at your watch right now? Oh, no, not at the time, but at your watch band. Now, friends, could you honestly say that your watch band improves the appearance of your watch? Well, it should. That's what Chrysler believes. Here, I'll show you. Just take a look at this jeweler's window. Now, here you see Chrysler's new watch bands. Now, for men, there's Chrysler's Monte Cristo. For women, there's Chrysler's Flirtation. And speaking of flirtation, here is one of history's best examples, Madame Pompadour. She was the Lana Turner of her day. No man could resist her. She knew the art of fascination through flirtation. So Chrysler has taken designs from Madame Pompadour's times and created jeweled watch bands called flirtation. This jeweled look is really high fashion today. So Chrysler's flirtation watch bands really beautify your watch. In this flirtation watch band, Chrysler uses genuine hand-carved cameos. In this one, Chrysler features baguette rhinestones. And here is another Chrysler style, individually set round rhinestones. Now let's get practical. Suppose you're washing dishes. Just slip these bands up out of the way. They're expansion bands. All flirtation bands come gift packaged. Have your jeweler show you how flirtation can give your watch that new jeweled look. And good news, flirtation costs only $10.95, tax included. Less than many bands without jewels. So make your watch look better than new with Chrysler. If money was no object and a man was determined to build an interplanetary spaceship, what would happen? For well, the answer, Chrysler now brings you Test Flight. Starring Lee J. Cobb. Yes. Yes, I, uh, I, I agree with you completely. Well? Uh, I'll... I'll call you later, yes. Has the committee decided what kind of pink tea it's going to serve? Well, we've decided, Wayne, that, a, that an undertaking like this uh, requires a general meeting of the board of directors. No. But, Wayne... I gave you exactly two minutes to come to a decision. Now, what's it going to be, a green light or a stop sign? Well, Wayne, it's hard to conceive of this type of venture on a moment's notice. I, I doubt if even you've thought this thing through enough. Davis, I've lived this day and night for the last six months. I've read every book, every article on space travel I could lay my hands on. Spoken to every astrophysicist in the country. I know what I'm talking about. Look at this. These charts. We've got to fly out of here first. Break out of here. That's what it'll do on our first test flight. Break out of the, the, this, into the stratosphere. Wait a minute. Here's a velocity chart. Shows how fast we have to go to get beyond our atmosphere. Break out of here and we're on our way. But, yes. but. But, Wayne, why gamble millions on, on, on space travel? Progress, gentlemen. I'm always for progress. Than anything we ever dreamed of up there. Well, this and I'm is... going to be the first man to find them. This is all very well theoretically. Mm. Wayne, even you, a spaceship. In view of the initial expenditure and in view of what Marty says about the ship, that it won't fly... You haven't got the guts. Wayne, even for you, a spaceship. That's right, a spaceship. A ship to take me into a world never before known by man. Crowder Enterprises, controlling not just one world, but all worlds. A mad idea, but I tell you, Davis, I'll do it if it takes everything I own. And the corporate assets. Wayne, as controller of this company, I, uh, I feel obligated to call your attention to the tremendous cost involved. Okay, you called it to my attention. All right, Wayne, all right. We'll go along part of the way, but if we should find ourselves sinking... All the deep... way, Davis, we'll go all the way. Remember that. 
Well, I, I don't know, Wayne. I'll, I'd, I'd have to sleep on it. That's right. You do that. You sleep on it. I'll start now. Marty, you honest we don't the world. Well, a lot of what he says is true. No advice, Marty, not even from you. You pay my salary, Mr. Crowder. Marty. If they line solid against me, you're the one man I need. Twenty years. A lifetime. Listen to this. Crowder's gall in tackling the impossible at times verges on mania, as witness his introduction of superjet atomic engines on his commercial air and water line. But this man has always succeeded, and if and when the first rocket shoots into space, Crowder will be on it. Is that why you're doing it, Wayne, to fulfill a magazine's prediction? Think of it, Marty, the first man to conquer space. You've got to get way up to reach a star, Wayne. If you fall, you're Humpty Dumpty. Translation? Well, I'm your chief engineer. My opinion on the feasibility of this flight may cut no ice, but the cost is my department, and it should interest you. Sure. The initial cost of building the rocket, plant, personnel, research, equipment, construction, well over 500 million. Go on, keep scaring me. Well, you have to shut down all of the Crowder Enterprises in favor of Project Rocket. It'll take every ship, every plane, everything you want. You'll have to scrounge in all parts of the world for material. It may take months, perhaps a year. And you'll be in direct competition with every nation on the globe. You'll be bidding in the open market for steel, aluminum, manganese, tungsten. That plunks you right into the middle of the defense work. Now, if you fight to procure those materials, you, you'll be the most hated man in America. Until the ship flies. All right, then, let's get down to the big point. We spend millions to build our rocket. All right, we can do that. But we can't fly it, Wayne. There isn't an engine in existence to power such a ship into space. I'll find the engine. Where? Bancroft, that campaign I outlined yesterday. Full sweep starting tomorrow morning. I want newspaper ads, radio, TV, the works. Get on it. Marty, money and determination can buy anything. Somewhere in this world, there's this man with my engine, and I'm going to find him. Start building the rocket. And Marty. Wayne, it's our meeting a month ago. You've spent exactly twenty and one half million dollars and still no engine to power your ship. Glad to see you've been keeping tabs on me. I'm controller of the company, Wayne. How do you do? I'm chairman of the board and largest stockholder. Largest individual stockholder, don't forget that. This company's owned by thousands of small stockholders, and I'm going to see that they're protected. They're little people. Yes, but with big voices. Wayne, you've railroaded this thing through. If you fail, you're going to be held to account for every single penny of the stockholders' money that you've gambled and lost. I won't lose. I never have. Well, don't start now, Wayne. I warn you. Don't start now.
Come in. London office. He, uh, he has something to show you. No models, Mr. Wilkins? No designs? It's really quite simple. <clears throat> My motor is based on the principle of the common magnet. Electromagnetism. Utilization of the force of gravity, or its opposite, counter-gravity. I think I can show you very simply this way, Mr. Carter. As you know, opposite poles attract. Similar poles repel. With this principle, I can power a spaceship. I've proven it with my working model in London. Marty? Yes, <clears throat> London looked into it pretty thoroughly, and I've checked it over. I think it'll work. What do you want? I want to help you build a spaceship. Why? You have your reasons, I have mine. The money? Perhaps. Here's a model of our rocket. It's useless. You'll have to. No. No, I haven't. OK, let's get started. One thing I must insist upon. No questioning of basic design. This I demand. This you'll get. One thing more. I must make the test flight. What? This is what I've been working for. 30 years of study and work. Space travel is all I know. It's been my life. OK. We've got our operation set up at my airport in New Mexico. We'll fly out there in the morning. Marty? How many millions does this toy represent? Give it to Davis as a souvenir. We'll get back to our tale of tomorrow in just a moment. But first, let's look back at the world of yesterday. Let's go back to the days of the famous Count of Monte Cristo. In those days, men were men. They lived daringly, dramatically, adventurously. So now Chrysler, inspired by Monte Cristo's times, creates some dramatic new designs in men's watch bands. Each one of these new Chrysler Monte Cristo watch bands carries a handsome coat of arms. Here, for instance, is the Fleur de Lis crest, an emblem of nobility. And look at this one, featuring a royal crown. Here's the costly jewelry look, rhinestones on simulated onyx. And all Chrysler bands have super calibrated seven coil springs for extra expansion, extra flexibility. Even the Monte Cristo package is something special. It's Chrysler's unique pistol box. But best of all, these new Chrysler watch bands cost only $12.95 tax included. Less than many ordinary watch bands. So, buy the Chrysler Monte Cristo at your jeweler. Make your watch look better than new with Chrysler. Now, we return to the second act of Test Flight, starring Lee J. Cobb. Yeah. Yeah, and see that the stuff gets down there on time. All right. Well, Marty, how's everything going in New Mexico? Huh? Oh, fine, just fine. Problems, but coming. Where's Crowder? Uh, he'll be back in a minute. Why? Why? Are you trying to be funny, Martin? I always thought you were a man of science. I just work here. Mm -hmm. 
You work for the corporation, too. Don't be too loyal to Crowder, or you're liable to find yourself as out as he is. Look at that. This is a bit premature. What if the ship does fly? Well, it'd better fly soon. Six months and how many millions of dollars ago Crowder decided to fly into space? Well, we've gone along far enough. A threat, Mr. Davis. Wayne, you're making our company the laughing stock of the world. More than that, you seem bet on breaking us. If you break, I break. That's small consolation. That's all you'll get. I warn you, Wayne. Get out. There was a meeting of the board of directors yesterday. There's no meeting of the board without the chairman of the board. We're through. We're fed up with your phony ideas of conquering new worlds. We forbid you to go on using the company assets for this madman's dream. Out. This is my plant and that's an order. Get out. Now get out. Starting right now, you'll not shove another voucher through without the board's permission. You try it, Wayne, and we'll put a padlock on this dream of yours. We'll put a padlock on you. That man worries me, Wayne. He won't stop me. He can't stop me. Marty, how soon will the ship be finished? Well, Wilkins moves in his own mysterious fashion. The man's a scientist, an engineer, a wizard. He may also be mad. Frankly, Wayne, I don't know what's going on. Let's fly down there and find out what's going on. Bancroft, now get the ship ready. We're leaving for New Mexico immediately. We're now in phase three. We were held up by the lack of magnesium. Our uh, tensile and stress problems also held us up. Now we're about to go into phase four. How soon will the ship be ready? It's looked about the same for the last month. How oh, but you're wrong. The phase I work at is all important. We are now in the home stretch. I ask how soon? As soon as you can furnish the fuel. We need a ton of mercurium-37. Marty? That'll take another hundred million dollars. And months, many months, to get what you want. I know nothing of finance. These are your problems. Turn back, Wayne. 37. Is it right to corner for personal use something the whole world needs? Ethics, the word gets in my way. Wayne, it's not right. It's right if it works. No matter how I get it, if I get it, and if it piles this ship into space, it's worth it if it breaks me. If they call me villain in every language in every country in the world. It's worth it if I can be the first man to fly through space. How about this, Mer man, that Wayne, but it's a big issue. Well, maybe we can keep it on the QT, and with your name on it, I think we can swing it. Right. Congo, the Paris crowd's in the bag. Sure, sure, Belgian Congo. This is your big day, Wayne. I waited for this a long time. A long, long time. And if it doesn't fly? It'll fly. How soon are we ready to go up? Very soon. We've fueled up. Now just a little checking on the motor. I thought we're through with that phase. It needs rechecking. We must be precise. You said we'd be ready to take off today. Perhaps. And again, perhaps not. We must be precise. Listen, my secret little friend. I've played a blind game of cards with you and with a partner who won't let me see his hand. I'm fed up, you under... Who does he think he is? You think he stole a billion to build this crate? Oh! It took manipulation, Marty, a mess of it. That mercurium deal broke against me too, Marty. I thought you were my friend. Wayne, that's not the point. What's all that noise? <laughs> Get out. How do you through the corporation's taking? I'm the corporation. You were the corporation. If I succeed, we'll be ten times more powerful than we ever dreamed of. Not we, you. You did this for Wayne Crowder, not anybody else. Just you. Why stop me now? The ship's ready to take off. Because there's a half billion dollars worth of fuel and material out there that I'm not going to let you wreck. 
Williams, we're taking off. That could be dangerous. I, I haven't checked. I said we're taking off today. All right. I'm ready. How soon? I'll be out in the ship in 60 seconds. Prepare to launch. The ship is not taking off. We're taking off in 60 seconds. You better pray that ship doesn't fly, because if it does, you're dead, Davis. When I get back, I'll own this world, and there won't be any room for you on it. If you're not moving out of here, I'll stop you somehow. Stop. You called your bluff, Davis. We can't stop him now. Nothing can stop him now. I hope it's closing. It's... Okay. Zero minus four. Generator's on. Zero minus three. Internal pressure on. Zero minus two, fuel activated. Zero minus one, zero. A conquered space. I said I'd be the first man to conquer space. I'll be the richest, most powerful man in the world. Look at it. The earth at my feet. I built this ship to go to Mars. Turn back! Turn back! Mr. Crowder, if we kill me, we'll never hit anything. You can't move them, Mr. Crowder. The controls are frozen. I'm going home to my planet Mars. Oh? Mars? Yes. You see, Mr. Crowder, it wasn't wealth and power that brought me to you. You wanted to build an empire on Mars. I simply wanted to go home. from tonight, look for another exciting tale of tomorrow, The Search for the Flying Saucer, starring Jack Carter with Olive Deering. And now, a final word from the Chrysler kids. Jack Chrysler. Jack Chrysler. On my hand. On your hand. Brown with royal crest to make it look grand. So grand, it's Chrysler. It's Chrysler. For me, too. For you, too. Make sure watch look better than new. Quality, style, and value, too. It's, it's the man to have on hand. It's Chrysler. <laughs> Make sure watch look at its best. The glamour of the room.
Men, make your watch look better than you with Chrysler's handsome Monte Cristo expansion watch band with a richly enameled crest. And ladies, see how Chrysler's new flirtation watch band adds jewel beauty to your watch. Remember, look for Jack Chrysler at your jeweler. It's the name that means quality in...